I've always gotten fucked around with a lot of different types of movies, which is funny because none of my friends or relatives are really that into movies. I'd always just sit around playing some mindless game while I'd grind for items for hours and hours and play a random movie or series in the background. At some point, I ended up streaming the first Boo, a Medea Halloween, and ended up really enjoying it. It was definitely unapologetic while also being a nice change of pace. I'll admit that I wasn't aware until much later that there were more Medea films, so I was really excited when Boo 2 was announced because I thought, hey look, it's a sequel to that movie that I really liked. So I went to theaters, and again, I really enjoyed it. After that, years went by, and I never really watched another Medea movie, despite seeing trailers for the new ones. That is, until the other night. You see, I had just dropped my girlfriend off, and I was feeling really lonely. You know, as someone does on a Monday night. I sat my ass in front of the computer, and I didn't really feel like playing anything. So I started scrolling through Netflix, and that's when I saw today's movie. That's right, baby, today we're talking about a Medea Homecoming. If you've seen any of the previous Medea films, then you more or less know what you're getting yourself into. At least that's what I think. There are currently a total of 12 Medea films and I've only really seen 3, but they all seem to kinda have a similar dynamic. Unlike what the title suggests, this movie follows the events leading up to Medea's great nephew Tim's college graduation. It's funny though, I don't know why the movie is called Homecoming, unless it's referring to the characters literally coming home to celebrate? I don't know, I'm probably just dumb. Anyway, the movie sets up that Tim is going to be using his family getting together to finally come out as gay. Throughout this, Tim is accompanied by his best friend Dobby, who we are made to believe might be Tim's romantic interest. The family eventually gets together, and Tim spills his big secret, and we end up getting two twists that I am actually not going to spoil. I'm not gonna lie though, they both did catch me off guard. Props to Tyler Perry for doing that since I'm quite good at noticing these kinds of things. Apparently. Says me. You know, this movie helped me notice something he does in the films that I actually like a lot. For example, the plot will follow all the younger generations like the grandkids and the great grandkids and they don't have all the serious topics revolve around them. While all the elderly people will sit back and sort of play comedic relief, they're almost like observers to a really juicy soap opera or a novella. The interesting thing about having all the elderly be the comedy relief is just when you let your guard down. The movie has Medea, who is probably the most ridiculous character in the movie, just drop the hardest wisdom bomb. A Medea homecoming is hilarious, there are plenty of jokes set up throughout. I don't really want to go through them all, but there are a few that I want to address. For starters, I think it's hilarious that Tyler Perry plays both Medea and her brother Joe, and he'll have Joe make mention to the fact that Medea has a schlong under her dress. If you don't come back, I just want y'all to know. That's a dude. There's also an ongoing joke about how Medea stays strapped because of her hard times as a stripper. These two things provide several jokes throughout the film, like when she proves that Red Lobster is full of strippers. Bro, boy, don't you start no coochie. <laughs> or when she shoots a gun into the sky and makes Uncle Joe quite literally shit his pants. Also, the movie explains to us that the real reason Rosa Parks allegedly didn't get up on the bus was because she stole Medea's man and was too scared to confront her, and then this is proven by a black and white picture Medea took in 1955 with her A-phone, I guess. But I do have to admit that if I did have a favorite character, it would probably be Mr. Brown. He's like the creme de la creme of comedy relief. I mean, just look at his outfits, they're so eccentric. Not to mention that he has this really funny bit in the beginning. As the movie starts, you just have Mr. Brown just spraying the grill with gasoline, essentially. And when he lights up the grill, it just reminds me of Eddie Murphy's stand-up comedy where he's talking about his uncle. And all I can think is, now that's a fact. Not to mention that it is hilarious when he gets high off of Medea's chocolates and then he gets on the roof and then just threatens to just jump off of it. The man is hilarious. For the most part, I don't really have any complaints with a Medea homecoming. But if I had to mention just one thing, it's that the movie is really blurry in two specific scenes during the graduation ceremony. I know for sure that it wasn't just my internet lagging either because I went back and it was just these two scenes. I mean, it's like 240p. So I'm left here wondering if this was just some sort of creative decision or just an oversight. With all this being said, you're all probably still wondering what I think. I'm gonna give this movie a yay. It's a lot of harmless fun. It's not perfect and it doesn't really redefine anything. And it's most definitely formulaic at this point. But it will most definitely get a few laughs out of you. If anything I said has made you interested in this movie, then you can head over to Netflix and catch it there. With all that being said, do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you want to hear me say more? 
Let me know down in the comments and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you can catch all my future videos. Thanks for tuning in and as always, this has been Suddenly Artistic. Peace out.